In this video, we're going to learn how to store data on the client side so that it persists between sessions of a web application. We'll do this with cookies. You'll learn about what a cookie is and how long it persists. You'll learn how to create a cookie and store it on the client side. And you'll learn how to get cookie data. Let's review how a web application works. The client will generate a request. When the first request is received by the server, it will create three objects. A request and response object, which correspond to the current request. And a session object, which will last as long as the client keeps returning to our application. Following the Java MVC design model, we'll use a servlet to handle the request and use model components as needed. It will pass execution eventually to a JSP to handle the view, which will be concerned with creating the response. We'll have several request response cycles while a client continues to visit our application, in which case we get new request and response objects each time there's a new request, but we continue to have a session. It's possible to store data that persists only within the request response cycle by placing it as an attribute on each request object. It's also possible to store data which lasts the entire session by storing it as attributes on the session object. But sometimes we need data to persist longer than that. We need it to persist from one session to the other. An example that you might think about is a website which when you return after a week or so away, it still knows your name. In this case, some data has been stored that persists between sessions. In this video, we're going to discuss one form of persistence between sessions by using something known as a cookie or cookie state. A cookie is a small piece of data that is stored within a client's browser when they browse a website. You can think of it as a name value pair. There's a name of the cookie and then there's the data value. Cookies always store data as text or string data. You can also set other properties such as the expiration date or the path which corresponds to the parts of your domain which can actually look at and use the cookie. Cookies are stored on the client. So incoming cookies to the server come from the client to the server along with the request. Cookies that are created on the server or outgoing cookies come from the server to the client on the response. Keep that in mind as we view code that creates or reads cookies. Before we write code that works with cookies, let's discuss how they work within a browser. Here we see Firefox, and within Firefox you can actually view cookies. If you use a different browser, you should also be able to view cookies associated with that browser, but you might have to go through a different way to get there. In my version of Firefox, I select Preferences. On the Privacy tab, I click on Remove Individual Cookies. In here I can see a list of cookies. Currently, in mine, I only see a cookie from Google. If I select it, I can view it has a name, which is called pref, content, something ID values, probably something Google uses to know who I am. It's available on google.com domain at the upper root for any type of connection, and it expires in 2014, about two years from now. The main data is the name, pref, and the value content. These other properties are also things we can set or are important items for us to set with any cookie. I could remove cookies just like any client can remove cookies. This means that while we can use cookies to persist between session, there's no guarantee that they do because the client may decide to delete them. Let's visit a popular website. I'll visit Amazon.com Sometimes it's informative to see what cookies we get from a particular website. Notice all of these cookies are provided by Amazon.com. They did not exist before I went to this site. Primarily there's Amazon.com. Has something XWLUID, probably my user ID, and some content. These are owned by Amazon.com itself. What about the rest? These are all advertising agencies that are, exist within Amazon.com's site. Many websites will store multiple cookies on our site. Also, many commercial websites will include cookies from third parties. This is so they can track you. 
Hence, one of the reasons people try to remove cookies so that they cannot be tracked. They're... Assume that I wanted to work with Amazon, I could remove the double-click cookie. While cookies are scary to some, they're also very useful for many websites and part of what makes the web work. So we have to be careful in keeping cookies that are important to us in how we use the web and deleting those that we feel are dangerous. It's a fine line. Let's have a look at an example which will help us see how we can work with cookies in our application. In this example, we have three view components. Index.jsp is the entry point to our application. A request will come to the server when I launch the program to show index.jsp. We'll provide a simple form to enter student name, student age, and student GPA. When the button of the form is clicked, a request will go to the server to run page 2 servlet. In this component, we will first read the data, and then we will create some cookies based on the user entered data. We then move to page 2 JSP. Page 2 JSP, we will read the cookies and we'll attempt to show them in a table. Another form with a button is available. When that button is clicked, a request to go to page 3 servlet. Page 3 servlet does very little. It just sends execution on to page 3.jsp. In page 3.jsp, we see the list of our cookies. We'll read the cookies in a table and we'll see their values. Along the way, a student.java object is used from the model. Before we run this, let's return to Firefox. Let's return home and clean out our cookies so we can see the new ones that are added when we run this. Remove all cookies. Here we are at the entry page, or the index.jsp page, of our application. Let's have a quick look at the cookies to see what's available. Localhost is the domain of my application as I run it locally on my computer. I see that one cookie does exist, a session ID. Most of the time, web applications use a cookie to keep up with the session so that when we return, it can connect that to the session object that was created. So that's how it knows that returning requests belong with a particular session. We'll leave that for a moment. Let's add a student name. I'll type Victor, who's five. And I'll hit go. When I hit go, a request was made from index.jsp to page two servlet. Page two servlet created cookies based on the request data. Recall that the only cookie that existed on the request was the session ID at that moment, but there were parameters. Page two servlet used the request data to create cookies and added those to the response object. Then execution was passed along to the page2.jsp to create the view. Page2.jsp created a table based on existing cookies of the request object. Remember, the only one there was the session ID. However, there are new cookies that were added to the response. So when the response was sent back to the client, the table shows only the first cookie, but now there should be other cookies on my machine. Before we click go to, let's have a look at those and now we see the local host in addition to the session ID also has the name cookie notice its content is Victor age cookie content is 5 and GPA cookie 4.0 these were all the names and values that were stored based on our input parameters from the table they did not show up in page 2 because they were not incoming cookies for this particular request and response but they were outgoing cookies when I hit page 3 to generate a new request, four cookies should be sent along with that request. As execution moves along to page 3.jsp, it reads all the cookies to create a table, and then we'll send back a response. So on page 3, we should see all four cookies in the table. And we do. Let's run it a little bit further to see what happens as we run this again. Recall that currently the cookies on our machine look like this. Now I put a new student name, Nicholas, an age. New parameter data is being sent. However, with this current request, it's the current cookies that are incoming to our server. So when I hit go, I expect that the incoming cookies show Victor 5, 4.0. The servlet will create new cookies and add them to the response. So the response, which is creating a table on the current cookies, will still show Victor, probably the same session ID, but new cookies are sent back. So we see session ID Victor 5 4.0, but the cookies that are stored on my machine now
show Nicholas as the name cookie. At this point, the name cookie, age cookie, and GPA are actually stored as Nicholas. So that's what should be shown on page three. And we see that they are. New request goes, the new cookies go along with the request, and those are seen in the view. For now, notice that the session ID says 1GUJ. When we return to view it after looking at the code, let's see if the session ID changes. Here we are back in Eclipse. Let's look at the code that generates and stores those cookies and then reads those cookies. Recall that index simply captures the data to begin with and then execution moves along to page two servlet along with the request. In page two servlet, the first thing that we do is get the data. These are request parameters due to the form being submitted with the request. Cookies may have been submitted with the request, but they were the ones that existed and not necessarily corresponding to the data provided in the form. Now we can make some cookies based on that data. This happens in this set of code where we make three cookies. We follow the same pattern, so I'll describe the first one in depth, and then you should be able to see that the only change is the name of the cookie and the data that's stored for the others. Possibly some other parameters were changed or properties. So when you declare a cookie object, you may have to import the cookie class. With the cookie, we declare our cookie object. We use the constructor new cookie, and it takes two arguments. The first argument is a label for the cookie. The second argument is the value, and this is stored in a local variable called student name. And as we see up in the request.get parameter, it's whatever name was provided in the form by the user. So this will create a cookie object. Next, we can set properties of the cookie. For example, we have a dot set max age property. That takes one argument, that's the seconds. Now you may look at this and say, how is that seconds? But if you think about it, this is actually two days worth of seconds. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, times 24 hours in a day, times two days. So that calculation gives us the number of seconds. I could have calculated that separate and entered the number, but why do that when Java can do that for me? Next property I'm setting is a path. The path specifies which part of your application can access this cookie. The slash simply allows the whole application to access it. If you wanted to create a cookie that was only accessible by a sub part of your domain, you could set that path here. At this point, we have created a cookie and we have set some of its properties. But we want this cookie to go back to the client. In order to do that, we need to add it to the object that is concerned with going back to the client, and that's the response. So conveniently, response has an add cookie method, and it takes one argument, which happens to be our cookie object. Reviewing the next set of code, you can see that we make two more cookies with the other two data types. At the end of the servlet, we determine that we want to go to page 2.jsp. We create our dispatcher object. We dispatch to the view component, and we send along our request and our response. Recall that request has the parameters set on the form, and any cookies that previously existed that were incoming cookies. And the response object has all of our new cookies that are outgoing to the client. When we get to page 2, we're going to read the cookies that are currently on our request. These automatically are sent when the request is created, so we did not have to set them except for some previous time when we added them to the response. But the request object has a method called getCookies. Now as we look at the description for getCookies, we see that it's going to return an array of cookies. You can see that by the square bracket listed after cookie in the description shown here. We declare an array of cookies. We're calling it cookies and we're getting those from the request object get cookies method. As it's an array, a convenient way to look through an array is simply using a loop. So here's a loop that starts at position zero of the array, continues through the array's length, and increments the counter by one. This portion includes all the code which is currently within the loop. First thing we do, each repetition of the loop, is to create a cookie object and assign to it the cookie that's in position I of the cookies array. At this point, once we have the cookie, we could do anything we want to process the data. In this case, we're just going to print it to a table. So you can see the table structure listed here, a row for each cookie, 
and a table cell, one that uses the get name to get the name of the cookie, and the second cell that uses the cookie method get value to get its value and store it here. So when this response is sent, we will have a table of all the cookies that were incoming to the server. After we see the table, we have an opportunity to click to go to page 3, so we have new incoming cookies. Page 3 servlet, we simply move along to page 3.jsp for the view. Page 3, again, we read the cookies array of the new incoming cookies, and we print those. Here we are back in the browser. Let's type in a new name we haven't seen yet. Estelle 29, 3.99 GPA. When we hit go, if cookies exist on our machine, we should see those as incoming cookies. We should not see Estelle because that won't happen until page 3 view. Oh, notice that we do. We see the cookies that were provided when we previously played with the application. Notice that the J session ID is totally different. We have a new session, but the cookies existed. So cookies persist between sessions from one session to the other. When I click page 3, the incoming cookies to the server should be the outgoing ones from the previous request response cycle. So they should say Estelle with the appropriate age and GPA. And we see that that's correct. Session ID is the same as it was on page 2, but since we have new incoming cookies, we have different values. So with this example, we should see that cookie state lasts from one session to the next. In this video, you've learned what a cookie is and how long it persists. You've learned how to create a cookie and add it to the response object to go out to the client. And you've learned how to get cookies as an array from the request object as it comes in from the client to the server. This has been a Piercy production.